Hi, my name is Ben. I am currently one of the interns serving at uh, the Avery apartment. Uh, so this is the devotional, brief devotion for busy people. And today we'll be on Psalm 30. And the title is, Joy Come With the Morning. So have you ever felt like God is angry with you? Because this or that happened in your life, maybe you have a heartbreak, or lost a loved one, lost your job or your spouse or your parents. Maybe you feel like God is not there and He's hidden His face from you. These moments are tough to go through. And I know that I'm not the only one who has been through these moments. Um, and in fact, it's very hard to see how God is currently working through our lives in all of this pain. I went through this as um, I was in college my first year, and I tried to pursue a degree in medical science and pre-medicine, but I failed out, and I lost my purpose in life a little bit. And it was very hard. I feel like God was not there, and God has abandoned me. Have you ever felt abandoned by God? Well, the good news is that you're not alone and that God knows and address these emotions and our questions by giving us an example of someone who had known and feel these exact emotions and how they navigate through these tough times. In Psalm 30, David showed us these truths. So in verse 1 to verse 3, I'll read it for us. I will extol you, O Lord, for you have drawn me up and have not let my foes rejoice over me. O Lord, my God, I cry to you for help, and you have healed me. O Lord, you have brought me up, my soul from shell. You restored me to life from among those who go down to the pit. So the first thing David reflect is to remember that he is that who has been healed by God and has experienced God's rescue from death and been restored by God. As you and I face hard times in our lives, David showed us the best way to approach is to know that God has first healed us from our sin, God has forgiven us, and saved us from the result of our sin. He has restored us to new life as His children now and to forever. We must know that the same God who saved us in the past has not changed and will currently save us and will finally save us in the future. Have you known of God's rescue? If so, look back on it today and recount the way He has saved you. In verse 4 to 7, it said, Sing praises to the Lord, O you His saint, and give thanks to His holy name for His anger but a moment, but his favor is for a lifetime. Weeping might tarry for the night, but joy come in the morning. As for me, I say in my prosperity, I shall never be moved by your favor, O Lord. You have made my mountain stand strong. You hit your face. I was dismayed. So the second thing David did was to praise God for who God is and his nature. These things never changes. He looks to God, loving nature. God's kindness, God's faithfulness toward His children. And He ultimately wants joy for His children, not to harm or punish them. Sometimes we might think God enjoy punishing us. But in actuality, God enjoys seeing His children rejoicing in His creation. Yet oftentimes we value, put our trust and our hope in our money or our relationship like David when he put his trust in his prosperity. And God might take some of these things away to reorient us. In verse 8 to 10, uh, it said, To you, O Lord, I cried. To the Lord I plead for mercy. What profit is there in my death? If I go down to the pit, will the dust praise you? Will it tell your faithfulness? Hear, O Lord, and be merciful to me. O oh Lord, be my helper. The third thing David did was to be real with God with his emotion and thoughts. 
He was crying out loud to God, begging God for the pain to stop. He tried to go back and forth, even arguing with God at times, and he's begging God to help him in some way of some form. Have you ever been in a situation like this when the pain doesn't stop? Do you know that it's okay for a believer to come to God with your pain? To sometimes even complain to God and ask God to stop your pain. A child of God can be honest with God in their prayer. God actually wants His children to talk to Him and be very honest, even in their doubts. So come to God with your pain today. Come to God with your struggle. And don't wait until you got it all together to come to Him, either in prayer or at church. Finally, in verse 11 to 12, it said, You have turned for me my mourning into dancing. You have loosed my sackcloth and clothed me with gladness, that my glory may sing your praise and not be silent. O oh Lord, my God, I will give thanks to you forever. David showed us that in the end, God's promise is true for all of his children, that God turned our sadness into joy, our weakness into strength, and our shame into honor. God can turn the greatest tragedy into the greatest happily ever after story. That is in the person and the work of our Lord Jesus Christ, in the greatest tragedy of mankind, he was able to reverse that and turn that into the greatest story, triumphant, victory, humankind have ever saw. In Jesus, we know that our ultimate hope is sure, is certain, not in just this world, but in eternity to come. As God's children, we can be glad in and rejoice in our eternal hope, our King Jesus. Mm-hmm.